Number 27. A freight train consists of two 8 times 10 to the 4 kilogram engines and 45 cars with an average with average masses of 5.5 times 10 to the 4 kilograms. Letter A. What force must each engine exert backward on the track to accelerate the train at a rate of 5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters per second if the force of friction is 7.5 times 10 to the 5 newtons, assuming the engines exert identical forces? Okay, so we have to find the force uh, each engine must exert backwards. All right, so uh, let's try to draw a free uh, body diagram of this. So let's create our axes. All right, and uh, let's just, we're going to uh, basically, uh, what, what, what's, the, what's the right word here? We're going to basically aggregate, all right, all of the cars and the engines into a single point. All right. So I know the train, you know, consists of a whole bunch of cars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to take, we're going to sum everything up so that we, we make a single point, went too far there. We make a single point out of the whole problem. Okay. So this point will represent the entirety of the train. All right. And now we have to describe what forces are acting on this entire train. Well, it says that the force of friction on the train is 7.5 uh, times 10 to the 5 newtons and I'm going to assume that the train is moving in the right hand direction therefore the force of friction opposes that motion and, and it will be pointing in the left hand direction so this will be the force of friction and that's going to be uh, 7 point, 7 point 7.5 times uh, 10 to the 5 right newtons it what else does it tell us it also tells us that there is an acceleration right that the train is accelerating and that acceleration is uh, 5 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, that's in the x direction. So 5.00 times 10 to the minus 2 meters per second squared. And what else do they tell us? And they give us a whole bunch of masses, right? So we can find the mass now of this whole train. So what is it? So we got two 8 times 10 to the 4 kilogram engines. Okay, so the mass of the engines is going to be uh, 2 times 8... Uh, 0 0.00 times 10 to the 4, right, 10 to the 4. So let's just uh, do that first, mass of the engines. So we get, uh, I mean, this is straightforward. So this is 1 1.6, 1.6 times 10 to the 5, right? That's in kilograms. I'm just leaving out the units. Um, and then we have now the, the mass of all the cars, right? So the mass of all the cars, it told us that we have 45 of them. So we have 45 cars. And they each weigh 5.50 5, times 10 to the 4. Okay, kilograms that is. So the mass of the cars now will equal 45 times 5.5 5, second e to the 4. So we get a total mass here of the car is going to be 2.48. Uh, 2.48 times 10 to the 3, 6. Okay, these are both in kilograms. So now to find the total mass right of the train we would just add these two together, right? So let's take, uh, add 1.6 times 10 to the five to that value. And we get a value of now 2.6, I'll call it four. 2.64 times 10 to the uh, six, and that's kilograms, okay? That's the total mass of the train. All right, so that is equal to M of the train. All right, so that sounds great. Um, so now it sounds like we have enough information to basically solve, right? So since there is an acceleration here, right, in the right-hand direction, there must be a net force then uh, pointing to the right as well. What that means is that there must be a force that's pulling the train, meaning the engines, right, that exceeds the force of friction by some amount, okay? And I don't know what that is yet. That's the point of the calculation. So let's do that now. So this is all in the x direction, so I'm going to choose the x formula. So here I'm going to do it over here on the bottom left. So the sum of the forces in the x direction should equal the mass of the object being accelerated multiplied by the acceleration in the x direction. So the sum of the forces in the x direction. So it looks like we have the force, I'll call it applied, so Fa, all right, the applied force, minus then the force of friction, because it's pointing in the left-hand direction, and that should equal again the mass times the acceleration. So now let's start plugging in some numbers. All right, or I mean, what we could do is I can already solve this algebraically and then just plug them in. It doesn't really matter. So the force uh, applied minus 7.5 times 10 to the 5 
should equal the mass, the total math that, mass that is. Uh, so we have 2.64 times 10 to the 6 kilograms, and the acceleration of the train is 5.00 times 10 to the minus 2 meters per second squared. So just add this term on over, right? And then add it to the product of these, and let's see what we get. All right, let me save some space. So we get the force applied here to the train is going to be 2.64 times 10 to the 6th times 5 times 10 to the minus 2. Great, and then plus 7.5 times 10 to the 5. So the force applied is going to be 8.82, so 8.82 times 10 to the 5, times 10 to the 5 Newtons. Now, that don't stop there, right? That's not necessarily the answer because look, it says what force, go back to the problem, what force must each engine exert? Right, backward. So whatever the force that the engine is exerting backward is equal to the force that the uh, engines are pulling uh, the train forward with, right? So, or I should say that the track is pushing the train forward with. So all I need to do now is basically take my force applied and just divide it by two, right? To find, to find then uh, the force applied by each engine, okay? So that should just be about, right, 4.41. So that's 4.41 times 10 to the five Newtons. So that would be the answer for letter, was that even a letter? Yeah, letter A. Okay, great. Now let's skip on over to letter B. All right, so letter B. What is the force? Oops, let me get the highlighter. What is the force in the coupling between the 37th and 38th cars? This is the force each exerts on the other. Assuming all cars have the same mass. Okay, they have the same mass and that friction is evenly distributed among all the cars and engines. Okay, so uh, just like how we aggregated the entire train to a single point in the prior part, uh, I'm going to try to do some aggregation here as well. Okay, and I think this, uh, so we basically have two parts to the problem, although I'm only going to look at one part and I should be able to answer the question. So the way I want to look at it is this way. Uh, there's, there's basically two units to this. I'm going to call this car, how many cars were there? 45. So this is car 38 through 40, five, okay? And that whole group of cars is attached to car number one uh, through 37 and the two engines, okay? So there's basically two parts to this problem, okay? But I'm only going to analyze one of them and I should be okay to answer the question. So basically the engines on the front of the train right here are exerting some force forward, right? Okay, so that's fine. And what's happening now with this part of the problem, meaning that aggregate amount of trains, what's going on there? Let's try to detail a free body diagram that describes what's going on uh, in, in this group of, I think it's actually eight cars. It looks like it's seven, but it's eight. Okay, so how are we gonna, let's do that. Okay, so how do I know that there's eight? We'll simply count 38, that's one, 39, two, 40 is three, et cetera. And you'll realize when you get to 45, that's eight in total. So just be careful about that. It's not seven, so don't do a simple subtraction there. Okay, because the subtraction value is seven, but the actual number of cars there are eight. So what I need to do is I need to find the total mass of these cars. All right, so how do we find that? So I'll, on the right-hand side, I'm gonna do uh, 38 through 45, right? There's eight cars, okay? Now, given that there's eight cars, okay? And each car has a mass, that's an eight, by the way. Each car has a mass of 5.5 times 10 to the four kilograms. I can find the total mass of all of those cars, right? So this would be just simply be eight times 5.5 times 10 to the four. So we get 4.4. 4.4 times 10 to the, looks like five, right? Times 10 to the five, and that's in kilograms. Okay, so that's the total mass of all eight of those cars. Okay, fine. So this, this whole group has a mass of 4.4, 4.4 times 10 to the five. Okay, now 
what what forces are acting on this car? Well, remember, each car is experiencing a frictional force and, and take a look at the problem. It says friction is evenly distributed among all cars and engines. All right. So what's the total friction? The total friction is 7.5 times 10 to the 5. Okay. So let's let's now calculate the frictional force here for those eight cars. So the frictional force will be the total frictional force, 7.5 times 10 to the 5, multiplied now by eight cars, because there's eight of them, but divided by the total number of cars there are, 47, right? Because remember, the frictional force here is evenly distributed over the 45 cars plus the two engines. Therefore, it's evenly distributed over 47 items. And of those 47 items, I only want to find the friction that's aggregated in eight. All right, so the math should work out here. So I get then the frictional force of those cars should be simply 7.5 times 10 to the 5 times 8 divided by 47. So this value works out to be something like 1.28, 1 1.28 times 10 to the 3, 4, 5, times 10 to the 5 newtons. Now, where is this force in the picture? Well, this force is, remember, if, if, if I'm looking at it this way, I'm trying to keep it consistent, the train is being pulled to the right, therefore the frictional force opposes that motion, right? So it's pointing to the left, okay? So remember, this dot right here represents the uh, eight group of eight, uh, the group of eight cars at the end, okay? So the frictional force here is equal to 1.28, 1.28 times 10 to the five newtons. Okay, wonderful. Now, that's the frictional force here, okay? Now, if I think about this, all I need to now really add to this problem is this thing called, I'll call it like tension or something. All right, I'll just call it T. Because, remember, this group now of, of cars are pulling, okay, the group of eight cars in the back. All right, so the, uh, the, the force or the tension in this coupling, okay, can be simply found by finding the total frictional force of all the eight cars, and then solving for the tension or the force of pull in between this, these groups of cars, meaning in between the last eight and the first 37 or 39, right? Including the two engines, okay? So now this is an X problem, meaning it's in the X direction. So I'm gonna do the sum of the forces in the X direction should equal the mass of those items multiplied by the acceleration in that X direction. Remember, the acceleration hasn't changed, right? The acceleration of these cars is still the same as it was before, of 5.00 times 10 to the minus 2. So the sum of the forces in the x direction, what do I got? Well, I got a positive t because it's pointing to the right, minus then the total frictional force of 1.28 times 10 to the 5, right? That should then equal the total mass of those eight cars, which we found up here, which was 4.4 times 10 to the 5, so I got 4.4 times 10 to the 5. And running out of space, I'm just going to write the times the acceleration on the bottom here of 5.00 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay. Now to solve this, multiply these two together and then add this value on over to the left-hand side. All right. And when we do that, we're going to get, let's see, 4.4 times 10 to the 5 times 5 times 10 to the minus 2 plus 1.28 times 10 to the five. And we get a value of exactly, exactly 1.5, 1.50 if you want, I think maybe we can use three sig figs, 1.50 times 10 to the five, and that is in Newtons. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, that is the force of pull, that is the force of pull, and, and it sounds like I am being pulled away from work at the moment. Hey, buddy. Hi, All right. Daddy. Hi, okay. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. Hope you learned a lot. Please remember to subscribe. That would be great. And I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you.